In this video, I'd like to walk you through the use of Digicam as a infrared image editor. Digicam is a cross-platform, open source, free image editing tool. It's easy to use at times, it's quirky at times, it can be quite powerful, um, but there's some gotchas you gotta be careful of and we'll walk through a lot of those. So let's get started. Okay, if we open up an image um, in uh, Digicam, the first thing that happens is it opens, opens up the raw import. Um, and from here we can uh, make some settings to import this into the editor. Uh, by default, uh, the white balance method is camera. If I, if I kind of reset this back to the defaults, you'll see if I select auto, automatic, and then hit the update button, you can see that Digicam does a really good job of selecting the white balance on an infrared image. So I'll hit import. And along the right-hand side is a number of tabs, properties, metadata, colors, maps, captions, versions. We'll come back to versions and tools. Tools is where you're going to probably spend most of your time. So the first thing I want to do here is go into the channel mixer. Um, and you can see that I had previously done a channel mix of red and blue. Uh, set the red to zero, uh, blue 100, and then on the blue channel, set the red to 100 and the blue to zero, and uh, it remembered those settings and made that those changes immediately. You can select this Save As button uh, to save your parameters. I save them as a, it saves it as a simple text file, which you can then read in and load uh, to use on other images, so that's really nice. Some other interesting tools here. There's a, a white balance tool. If you feel you need to make some tweaks um, to the white balance, you can load this up and make some adjustments to the white balance. There is a color balance tool, which allows you to make color changes globally. Um, I can under reset to the defaults, um, and you can see I can make radical changes to the, the, the balance. Um, this can be useful if, uh, like for example, if I wanted to get the sky to be a little bit more blue here, I could make that change here. This is global. Um, it's not limited to a color or limited to the highlights, midtones, or shadows. This is global, so that's kind of one of the limitations here. So I'll make that adjustment. There's also an HSL option, hue, saturation, and lightness, which kind of has the same restriction. I can uh, make changes to uh, these values, but they apply globally. They do not apply selected level. So there's some limitations there. So I'll pump up the saturation a bit and hit OK. Let's see, there's an adjust levels tool, which is uh, really nice. Reset that to its defaults, and then there's an auto button that I can use to auto adjust my levels. Another thing that's really interesting here is uh, the there's a plugin uh, called the GMic QT, which is really um, a, a collection of hundreds of plugins. Most of um, Digicam is based on plugins. Most of the tools have it has a very flexible plugin structure, um, and from here you can get access to uh, just a huge number of plugins that do all kinds of interesting things. Down in the color section, there's a lot of stuff that could particularly apply to, to infrared photos to do various things. Um, so when I'm done, I can, uh, done with that, I'll save it, and I will save my changes. Now this, this kind of gets us to the first uh, challenge that we have uh, with Digicam, and that is, is that uh, you'll notice that my images were saved as a JPEG. Um, and if you're just going to come in and open up a, an image, make a couple quick changes to it, a couple quick edits, um, and then export it uh, social media or something, then th this could be fine as is. But in all likelihood, you, you might come back, revisit the image, edit it in multiple sessions, and you don't want to do that with JPEG. You're, you're going to be degradating the quality of the photo with, with every time that you open it. So if I, if I open the image back up and I click on the versions tab, you can see that it saved uh, the different versions of this image um, and it's showed me the actual changes that I made throughout. And that's kind of nice. I can see what changes I've made. The downside is, is that I can't do anything with that information. I can't roll back to this version. Um, there's, there's limits to what I can do here. So this versioning kind of keeps a history of what's happening, but it doesn't let you do anything with it. If I go back here, up here, and select Open Original, that simply opens up the raw import and allows me to kind of start all over again. So I could, I'd have another version of this image, which then make changes to 
if I save if I save those changes um, and go back to versions, save, you can see I'm starting to build a collection of the changes that I've made over here, but these aren't these aren't there's nothing that I can do with the uh, with these changes. I'm simply saving multiple JPEG files. So you're going to get a big collection of JPEG files and that's that's going to be problem. So let me let me show you a couple changes you can do to help with this. If I go into settings and configure, I want to scroll down to the image editor, select versioning. Um, you of course want to enable non-destructive editing, um, which means that your original file isn't going to get overwritten. It's a raw. So if you're shooting raw, that wouldn't be the case anyway. Um, I would recommend changing your workspace format from JPEG to either TIFF or PNG. These formats will um, provide better um, quality. You won't get the loss that you will with JPEG artifacts. Um, so that's going to be much better for your work. You might also want to check that these were not on by default. So these were, when you first open up the program, these are off. But you might want to check these to keep a snapshot of the edited, edited image. This will keep more versions in the version control, the versioning uh, tab on the right there. So those will help you a little bit. Um, but they're still not going to make this as flexible of a program as you might get from, say, um, Lightroom, Raw Therapy, Capture One, Dark Table, etc. Um, so those are going to give you the ability to do a real, what I would consider to be more really non-destructive, where you can roll back a, to a particular point in time and then edit forward, um, and you're limited in what you can. Do. But if you if you save to a TIFF or a PNG, you might be able to do more. One of the things that I really like about Digicam, though, is the Batch Queue Manager. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm gonna, I'll start by picking a few images. We'll pick a handful of images. All right, and then I'm going to select the Batch Queue Manager. So this opens up, and there's a lot going on here, so let me explain. On the left in this queue, these are the three images that I selected. Down here on the, the lower left is the queue settings. So I want to save my results in the original album. I want to use the original file names. I'm not going to make too many changes here. Uh, under raw decoding, I do want to make sure that the white balance is set to automatic. Um, and then there's options for saving files. And then in the lower right hand corner is the control panel. Um, where I can uh, manipulate the the batch processes that I actually want to take. So up here, when I when I make a change to the control panel, it's going to appear in assigned tools. So let me clear out my list here of what's in the assigned tools and start from scratch. So the first thing that I want to do is uh, put in a channel mixer. During, in the raw decoding, I'm going to automatically set the white balance, and then I want to do a channel mix. Um, and this is uh, brings up the settings on the upper right. And there's a little bit of frustration that results here because there's a little bit of a bug here. So if, I, if I'm in the red channel, I can set red to zero and blue to 100. And that's good, but if I go to the blue channel, the problem with the blue channel is every time you make a change, it, there's a bug that automatically switches the output back to the, to the red channel, which is super annoying. Um, and as you can see, Every little tweak that I make, it just keeps switching the channel back. Now, once I've figured that out, um, it's not so bad. Um, I can play around with it and get where I want. Okay, so now I have my red at 100% blue and my blue at 100% red. Whew, that, that's tedious. Okay, so I can then go down and apply any other changes that I want. Um, so any of these other tools, uh, I could apply those to my batch process as well. So other enhancements, etc. If you wanted to crop images or if you wanted to change the metadata, there's all kinds of stuff you could do. But I'm going to look to the output format. So the first thing I you know looked at here was this convert raw to DNG. And I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. That would be a really nice way to batch process a bunch of raw images to DNG. Nope, doesn't work. So all I've been able to get is edit uh, errors out of this. So that's not so good. Uh, but convert to TIFF uh, does work successfully. So I can bring that up. And then I can decide if I want to compress files as a file. And that's it. So I've got my, my queue of files to set up. I've got the settings. I've set up my workflow of what I want to do. 
um, and now I can hit run. And now the program will run through um, and process these images. You can see some of my red failures here from trying to create DNGs with a, like a plugin that's not ready for prime time yet. Okay, so now I'm going to close the batch queue manager and go back to the browser. And when I do that, you can see that the images that I batch processed have a corresponding uh, TIFF version that's been created. And I can open those up and they're all, uh, that the basic work is done for me and I, I can get off to making any other changes that I'd like. The one down here. That's there. And then this one. So um, that's a feature that I really like. Um, if, if I ever find myself in a need to uh, modify a lot of images quickly, one of the things that's cool in the, um, the batch queue manager is that you can just set them to be in another directory. So I could, um, I could create a new directory, um, a new album here, and then you could just run a batch process and create a whole bunch of images as a test. And if you like them, you know, you can save them. If you don't, you can just delete them all and no big deal. They're in a different directory and they don't interfere with your original. So I think that this batch tool is uh, uh, really potentially really powerful. So that is my uh, first look at uh, Digicam for editing infrared software. Uh, so in summary, I think that this is um, a very easy to use tool, very simple tool. If you are uh, doing some quick edits to an image that you want to share, uh, and no matter what platform you're on, it's free. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits going there. There are some downsides. Uh, the workflow for complex editing is not strong. The color management, unless you're going to dive into the plugins, is not really strong. Um, there are some bugs here and there, so that's going to be challenging. So if you're aware of those things and can kind of navigate around them, uh, then you'd be in, in really good shape. And if you and if you want to use the batch queue manager, that has the potential to be really powerful. So some pros and cons for Digicam. Would I use this as my um, main infrared editor? No, there's too many other good solutions. Um, uh, even if you're just limited to free solutions, there, there's great solutions like Raw Therapy and Darktable. Uh, and then, of course, there's a number of great paid solutions as well. So I wouldn't really make this my primary tool, but could I use this as a, a quick tool? If I'm uh, you know, looking to, to do something quickly or maybe to do some batch processing, this could be a nice tool to have in your kit to help with those. So hope you enjoyed. Thanks.